Uh, we've got an article about the USAF addressing the T-38 engine issue. So uh, recently we just talked about um, the T-7 being delayed and then, you know, they're, they're even reaching out for civilians. But in this article, um, the one of the biggest issues with the T-38 is that it's it's got engine problems. You know, they're, the engine life of the, of the engine itself. And then the T7 is all is having all these delays, so there's really nothing um, to bridge the gap. And they're like, "Well, IOC is 2027." And if you scroll down, uh, so it says the delays for the Red Hawk have been due to the jet's cockpit and flight control systems uh, with parts delays. They've not seen the new program. Uh, the flight test is the hard part. So they're basically saying. We've had parts issues to even get to flight test. And once we get to flight test, there's no guarantee that this is going to work. And so the highest profile is the ejection seat system, which uses uh, blast cords. Uh, they said the risk is of injury during pot requires a redesign. They had to approve a waiver to allow pilots to fly it. And it's that same system, if, you know, that they keep. It's a European thing. They want to eject you through the canopy. <laughs> it's. We, for whatever reason, they just have this aversion to, to jettison in the canopy. They want to go through it. Uh, but they said, from an engineering perspective, we're on the right path. Uh, but the issues with the J-85 scroll down, they don't have one in production. So the mission capability rates are really, really low. And now they're like, well, hey, maybe we can figure out a different engine or a better quality engine. Uh, so... But they also have structural components that they need to do, laundrons, bulkheads, skins, and others, uh, 150 components. And, dude, that's just, just not going to work. I mean, they're talking, um, we can get rid of this. It just makes me sad. No, dude, 2027. Back. It says it in the article. It's going to work. 2027. Yeah. Bro. So uh, it's the perfect storm, right? Because, oh, well, it's not really a perfect storm. It's a stupid storm. Because the T-38, as I just said earlier, is so far past its useful life that this is just, I mean, it's like you got to put it out of its misery. But then you've got this T-7 that was supposed to be plug and play. It was supposed to be, um, you know, this, this design that already existed. We were just going to adapt a few things and bing, bang, boom, we've got our next trainer and it can do all the stuff. It, the T-50 lost, which the T-50 shared all the other stuff with the F-35, so it would have been, you know, plug and play there. But also the T-50 is being used by South Korea. It's that joint Lockheed Martin, South Korea. And the T-50 had applicability as uh, a low-cost uh, fighter uh, as far as, like, cast, close air support, stuff like that. So it, it was kind of, it was there, Boeing won, whatever. But then now we get into the, okay, we need this thing to work and it's not. And it's stuff that is like an ejection seat. Really? Like w why, why are we in this point where an ejection seat in a modern fighter is the problem or why are the flight controls a problem? Like this should all have been sorted out a long, long time ago. And now, I mean, we're, the training's going to suffer and a training backlog is going to continue to be a problem. And the Navy was also looking at like what are we doing next? So this could affect the Navy too because, you know, the Navy was kind of talking about if I remember right, they were kind of talking about the T seven or something because they weren't going to do the boat stuff anymore. Well, if you can't get the T seven to work even at the basic Air Force level, what's the Navy going to do? You know, this is a this is a big problem. Yeah, <clears throat> pilot bonus to stay in problem solved. To do pilot what? Bonus. Who are you going to train? What right. are we flying? Well, no, you'll be the frontline fighters because there's nobody to train because nobody's going to come up. So we're going to have gonna like be... sixty-year-old dudes because they just happen to still know how to fly. You know, you it's going to be primary. I mean, it's, I mean, it's sad to me because, uh, I mean, mover back me up. You flew the T thirty-eight a little bit more than I did, but in my, I don't know how many hours I have, 150, 70, whatever, two hundred hours in the T thirty-eight. I only ever had one engine problem uh the airplane the engines in the airplane were super reliable so is it just parts are timing out and they don't have replacement replacement parts or because i don't ever remember us losing a line 
because the jet had engine problems except for like me that one time <laughs> you know uh it's it's sad to me it's i mean it's a it's it's such an old i i don't understand why they can't well dude apart. you remember when i had that compressor stall at at eglin it was some bleed air valve right yeah, it was a bleed yeah. air valve and because the cockpit got real hot and you know it was like wombat you and i've talked mm -hmm. about you know your, your worst nightmare where the cockpit just goes full hot and there's nothing you can do about it um it's one of my worst nightmares. I have a lot. Yeah, it is a terrible <laughs> one because you're in a greenhouse with a, the thing. Yes. But um, the when I were, when we were doing the deep dive because it became I think it was like a class C or something like it was a mishap because of uh, because it totally took out that entire engine. Like you know the damage was 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 pretty massive, so to speak. And the thing was, all these parts were flight of failure because they didn't have they couldn't fix it. Like even if they knew. It was like, we're just going to fly this one to failure. We're going to fly this part to failure. We're going to fly this part to failure. And that's the problem with an engine that is no longer in production. They're no longer making parts for it. You know, the parts shortage is so significant that it's backed up. You know, it, it's it's just like everything else, dude. You can't, you know, keep yeah. this thing going forever. <clears throat> so the engine issues are just parts timing out. Because I don't, I like, usually, yeah. usually engines start and I went. Parts um, and supply chain. Parts in the supply chain. I mean, dude, who's oh, making God, them? You're awesome. Engine turn well, on, I go fly. <laughs> well, pretty much. I mean, that, that's how I operate. But, you know, I and, you know, Wombat, coming full circle back to what you said earlier, it wouldn't surprise me if the whole T7 deal was, you know, political. I, I mean, I'm oh, not saying it's good or bad. It's 100% political. Are you kidding not, me? It's not saying it's good or bad. Political. Not saying it's good or bad, but I just... Uh, all know, this stuff is political, man. It, it's It's all... too bad because... Because it is at, at the end of the day, it, it really crushes. Like we were saying, there's a huge gap, and at least, you know, not that the Navy's the smartest branch out there, but you know, at least they bought T45s in the 90s. Yeah, which are right? starting to time out. They are starting to time out. You know, before that, they had the A4, which was about the same time the Air Force had 38s. Right, so it's crazy that the Air Force has been able to keep them going as long as they have, and it is. I mean, to <laughs> whoever whoever the dude in the '80s was who was in charge of like uh, ATC uh, aircraft, it's like, dude, you <laughs> you let us down, man. Because that that replacement well, airplane should have came a long time ago. Yeah, but you remember the '90s were, I uh, mean, dude, there was a drawdown, and yeah. then where's all the money getting funded? We needed light attack in the 2000. Like we we needed. Oh, we're always fighting the current war, not the next war. And yeah. the same thing with AETC when they're like, okay, we got this T6. Cool. That was based off of a Pilatus. So right. we, we we didn't clean sheet design that one. We we got rid of the tweet. Cool. But then the, the T-38, they were like, okay, well, we'll, we'll put the you know ejection seat, which they didn't until after, after me. But the first thing was the T-38C with the glass cockpit and the HUD and everything. And they're like, this will be bridge the gap. Because re remember, dude, the T-38 is like a first-gen fighter. Yeah. Dude, it yeah. doesn't simulate, and it hasn't for most of its existence. It does not simulate anything in the United States military inventory. It doesn't fly like an F-15, doesn't fly like an F-16, doesn't fly like an F-18. F F-22, F-35 for sure. Like when you learn how to fly T-38, it is 100% stick and rudder skills and it has nothing to do with employment. You're learning to fly T-45 is the series. same way. I mean, yeah, T-45 is the same way. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what drove me nuts. Like when we would try to do it tactically because it was stupid. Like right. IFF was such a waste because it's like, okay, you're going to pull to 400 knots. You're going to hold the buffet. And, you know, it's like, dude, first thing I got in a Viper, I'm like, this is nothing like that piece of crap. You know, this is, this is not like absolutely not even in the same universe. And yeah. so the question is, are we building stick and rudder skills or are we building a lead in fighters to the next thing you're going to do, which is, I think what they were trying to do with the T seven, which was, Hey, it's less about flying and more about systems management because dude, you know how it is. Uh, Gonky, you might not because you're, you're a, averse to technology but you get in some of these vehicles today cars trucks or whatever look how many people struggle when they get overloaded with all the the technology and stuff and you put that in an airplane you're like i mean how many times as an airline pilot have you heard what's it doing now oh you every know, flight <laughs> what's it doing because you know at some point the t6 has taught you how to fly 
the T38 right. needs to teach you how to employ and manage systems because one day you're going to have a, a 12 ship of loyal wingmen and sensors and global essay. Well, there is such thing as too much essay because now you have so much situational awareness. You don't know what to do. You're just, there's so many things coming at you at once. And that's what it was supposed to teach. But instead we are backlogging. I mean, look out, look at the delays in pilot training right now. It's like two years plus some, in some cases, wow. you know, a Lieutenant is, is now a first Lieutenant pushing captain by the time that they graduate pilot training. And you're like, dude, you're wasting years. I mean, we do this when we're young. You yeah. Know? We do this when we're junior, not, not as a captain with no experience. Well, well, and then the other part of that too, is it takes you two years to get through or two plus years to get through flight school, dude. Like you're bitter now. Yeah. You've lost was, the guy. You've lost the customer. Like I yeah. joined to be a warfighter, not yeah. to be a professional student. And you know, damn well, if they're not flying, they're sitting around doing whatever it is. 20 some odd year olds do, which <clears> ain't <throat> good. Nothing yeah. good comes out of that. And it's not morale building. It is not, no. dude. It not, sucks. Well, and that, and dude, your your commitment doesn't start until you graduate. Well, yeah, and they know ten, that, that which years? is another reason yeah. why that ten years. They're... That's why these kids are like, "Oh, I don't want to go to the fighters." No, I just yeah, just no kidding. Heavy, I don't, dude. In track. a lot of in a lot of regards, I don't blame them. Yeah, because. Yeah. Like, where is that warfighter? Where is that dude? You're the tip of the spear, man. Like, you are gonna, oh, dude. It's like, no, you're not. If you're lucky, if you're really lucky, you're gonna get to shoot down a balloon. Cool. <laughs>